This is Fox 26 Morning News Extra. Sometimes it seems like we need a PhD to buy the right skincare products. The labels make all kinds of claims, and it's very hard to know which ones are important. That's where my next guest comes in. He's dermatologist Dr. Paul Friedman. So glad you're joining us Thank this morning because me. it does drive me crazy when I look at these products. Let's talk about some of those buzzwords, and I have a whole list of them here that we want to go through. Patent pending, what in the world does that mean, and why would that be important to us? Well, it's not necessarily important because just because the product is new or there's a new ingredient out out there doesn't mean that it's going to be best for you and your skin type. It means that the inventor of the product or the formulation has filed with the government exclusivity the right to distribute the product, sell it, or manufacture it. But again, it's important that the consumer realize that just because a product is new, there's a lot of hype around it, mm -hmm. doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to be best for your skin and your skin type. What about those words, all natural, organic? I mean, we think about if we want to eat our fruits and vegetables organic, certainly we want our products to be that way, but does it really mean anything? Great question. And all natural and organic is something that we commonly see. It's a buzzword that utilized a lot these days but in reality there's really no studies that that show that organic products are any safer or more efficacious than a synthetic product and oftentimes when these organic ingredients are mixed with a synthetic uh, ingredient or a preservative, mm -hmm. they often lose their natural orientation. So you really can't necessarily hang your hat on that word. But also hypoallergenic, that sounds great. I mean, wow, there's nothing in there that we could possibly be allergic to that we don't know about. Does that matter? Not necessarily true. Again, these, believe it or not, these, these labels, this, these terminologies, these words that are used are not regulated by the government. So there's really no stringency and guidelines to, to determine before you can label your product hypoallergenic. Now, as a dermatologist, for my patients who have sensitive skin, mm -hmm. eczema, or history of allergies, I will say look for products that, that are, quote, hypoallergenic, but I think it's imperative for the consumer to sit with their dermatologist to determine which products and ingredients are best for their skin. It's so frustrating that so many things are regulated, and it makes you wonder why products are, but we're not even going to go there. I guess that's a different uh, discussion. Fragrance-free, does that kind of go along with hypoallergenic because so many people are allergic to different fragrances? Exactly, and, and it's, it's, again, it's the terminology is not regulated and just because it says fragrance free there could be a plant fragrance in there mm -hmm. that can be irritating to your skin so again it's important that you do your homework that the consumer is savvy and and researches the products before going in and purchasing them yeah because there have been plenty that I've seen that are fragrance free that I could smell they smell nice but sure. nevertheless I could smell something this is a hard one for me to even pronounce but non-comedogenic what in the world does that mean I see that a lot so that's a word that we as dermatologists use to tell patients to look for on their on the products that are non acneogenic or won't mm -hmm. clog pores but again, it's a word that's not necessarily a guarantee that the product won't uh, promote acne for your particular skin. Now, one I think that draws a lot of people probably is one that says, well, you know, prevent premature aging. Well, everyone wants to prevent premature aging, but is it going to do that? Right. Well, you know, in reality, if, reality, if a product is going to prevent premature aging, it's going to have to be classified as a drug because to do that, it's going to have to affect the structure and function of the skin. So it's a terminology that can be sometimes used in a product that just basically contains sunscreen because, as we know, sunscreens can help prevent premature damage, but you can't necessarily hang your hat on that terminology either. You have this book here that we... We showed a picture of the cover a few minutes ago, Beautiful Skin Revealed. Or do you have some other tips in here that we can go and delve into this sure. topic deeper? Because I think at the end of the day, everybody wants to try to not to spend too much on their products, but really get something out of them. That's, we have actually have a whole chapter dedicated to products. And what we say in that chapter is that your skincare line doesn't necessarily have to be that glamorous. It's something as simple as having a sunscreen that you apply daily, 365 days a year, a good moisturizer, and then at night, either a retinoid or a retinol is really is a really great skincare regime for your skin. It doesn't have to be really expensive to, to, to be effective. I think a lot of people are going to like hearing that. Dr. Paul Friedman, thank you for being thank here you. today. Thanks for walking us through all of this. And the next time I look at those products, I'm going to remember what you had to say. Thank you.